Death Note boasts a plot so ambitious, I had to enroll in a four-year college degree to begin to comprehend the level of big brain dumb luck that takes place in this show. So today, I will do my best to tell the elaborate tale of the Notebook of Death in the most amusing and ambitious way possible since Ryan Johnson's attempt to hijack the Star Wars saga. My monkey-level intellect will be my sole guide through this process, supported by my ability to speedrun an entire 37-episode series in less than half a day. So stick with me, lads, through this journey we are about to partake on, and I promise you'll be entertained till the end. In the demon overworld, not underworld silly, the Shinigami with a face only a mother can love reflects in the rising red line found on graphs that show the increase of crime, poverty, and fruit prices in a compact idiot proof <gasps> format. Thank you, data scientist. Tired of sitting around reaching the slow realization he's butt fucking ugly, while also gambling all his monopoly money with a bunch of depressed demonic beanie babies, Ryuk drops a little black book into a schoolyard that has the power to kill anyone and everyone. Our main character and light of my life, pun intended, stumbles upon said notebook. Seeing that the notebook reads Death Note, cute title, across the cover, like any reasonable, stable individual, Light leaves it alone and goes home. End story. Yes, I'm just kidding. Light picks up the book and does a little test run to see what this bad boy can do by killing two criminals. Just as stated in the demonic book, they both die. While most people would be scared shitless that they've just opt two guys using a magic book that's fallen from the heavens, Light takes it upon himself to become the world's salvation through passing judgment upon those who break laws. And in a sense when he sees it necessary. Mr. Fugly shows up to introduce himself to Light and listens to a narcissistic speech about becoming god of a new world order. Satisfied that his boring immortal life now revolves around a chaotic soul sociopath, Ryuk joins the battle. Not really, he's neutral. As Light continues his crusade of mass murder, international long name police organization becomes concerned with the random acts of death bestowed upon criminals. They phone in their trump card L, as in the alphabet letter, as well as this badass butler who gives Alfred a run for his money. As more and more criminals keel over like a 600 pound American who eats nothing but fake cheese, the public gives the man responsible, our lord and savior Jesus Light, the Elias of Kira, the ICP whatever it is holds a teleprogram with a man claiming to be L of the alphabet, who then slaps Kira across the ass cheeks with his insult coaching from COD lobbies and Xbox Live. Light then baby rages and kills L, but surprise, that's not the real one. Light rages even more as he's been fooled and these two swear to hunt each other down in the name of romance. The police investigation rails up, but thanks to the coincidental nature of this show, Light's father is the chief of police, which gives Light secret access into daddy's computer to keep up to date with the investigation. Since the police currently suspect a school student based on the killing schedule sounds a little dark, Light writes in deaths to occur every hour to get the heat off his back. America decides they want a piece of this action, and the FBI enters Japan to do their own little investigation of Kira. Goth Man Bat warns Light about their new potential stalkers, and what comes next is the most elaborate and complicated plan that had so many chances to go wrong, but alas, it never did. Light goes on a date with a classmate while his stalker falls. Once on the bus, a drug dealer who Light has used the death note on hijacks the bus, giving Light the chance to see the FBI agent's ID. The fiasco ends with Light's death note entry coming to a close and the drug dealer croaks. He then waits an entire week and in another elaborate plan, he tricks the FBI agent to write all the names of agents in Japan unbeknownst to him on a piece of the death note and in one fell swoop, Light has annihilated the entire American investigation. Now, how did that work out? with no problems whatsoever. I've got no idea, man. With the fear of God in them, all but five Japanese police officers resign from the Kira case. The remaining investigators gain the trust of L, who they meet in person. Unsurprisingly, the plot thickens, and it turns out that Light's dad will be heading the Kira case. It is somewhat of a mystery how his father has the IQ of a goldfish while Light is blessed with the brain of a genius, but eh, we'll work with it. While Pops is meeting with L and the rest of the task force to discuss their plan of action, Light gets called upon to deliver some clothes to his Pops' office. While there, he spots a woman who's got some juicy info on Kira. She also just so happens to be the fiance of the FBI agent Light used and killed. Light attempts to charm and lure her in a predator-like fashion and eventually finds out her name and attempts to kill her on the spot. But oh, what's this? Another person has the brain besides a letter of the alphabet and Jimmy Neutron here. Light passes a speech skill check to somehow razz proper identification out of her and once again, it's point Light. Elle becomes very, very fishy about the deaths of the FBI agents, specifically 
Billy Penber and his fiance. He narrows Kira down to the two households Penber was investigating, Yagami and the deputy director. You fucked up now, like. The task force decides to install spy camps into each of the houses. A little illegal, yeah, but who cares? When Light gets home, his sixth sense paranoia kicks in, and he instantly is aware that he's being watched. With the help of bribery and expulsion of a demon's addiction to apples, it's like heroin for them or something, I don't know. He dispatches Man Bat to locate the cameras in the house, finding out there's 64 in his room alone. Regretfully for us, he's a brainiac capable of big brain plays, and he uses this opportunity to create an alibi for himself by using a mini TV he hid in a bag of potato chips to find and kill criminals, writing study notes with his right hand and names in the big black book of death in his left like an absolute fiend. While this does take the heat off himself with the investigators, El's suspicion is raised at the lack of reaction from Light about the planet fake news bit of 1500 FBI agents being sent to Japan. Obviously, any normal human would at least raise an eyebrow at something like that, but not this guy. Shouldn't have played it cool, you dirty dog. You're so smart, you're stupid. Do better or dumb. I don't really care. You're a mass murderer. Probably shouldn't be giving you advice. After the whole potato chip incident, L is at a loss and decides to get his hands dirty. He somehow enrolls straight into Light's high school class mid-semester, taking a college exam and getting a perfect score, just so he can go and fuck with Light, putting him in his place. Light starts panicking as he realizes he is now L's bitch and goes home to cry about it. Eventually, though, he puts on his big boy pants and accepts L's challenge, and they face off becomes even more heated. Light and L go on a couple dates as they try to figure out the true sexual preferences of each other. Oh, and they they try to find their hidden identities. That's probably the more important one. Elle uses a puzzle left by Kira that involves three notes written by prisoners Light's killed. The trick is to introduce a fourth note that is a fake planet by Elle. If Light were Kira, he would jump to the conclusion that there were only three notes, which is what ends up happening. Light becomes flustered and nervous from Elle's advances on him, further supporting Elle's suspicion that Light is, in fact, a little gay. I joke. Light attempts another bluff to prove his innocence, involving him staying in a prison cell for one month without a TV to show he isn't Kira, while Elle doesn't take him up on the offer just yet, he does bookmark it for a later date. Meanwhile, there seems to be some spicy news being brewed up over at Sakura TV. A voice claiming to be the ever so popular killer Kira pops on the TV and starts killing scandalous news anchors left and right. As one of the task force members rushes to the TV network to stop the recording, he gets ratioed by Kira, only it turns out that this Kira is not the same as the first. The Daddy Yagami pulls up with a fucking ambulance and rails the front doors of the news station like a scene from everyone's favorite buddy cop movie, Lethal weapon. He is then successful in stopping the broadcast. Light deduces that this new Kira must have traded half their soul with a demon to obtain the death verse equivalent of the Sherningan. This pair of eyes lets you see someone's name and lifespan, making them easier to kill. As it would later turn out, Kira 2 is a girl obsessed with Kira 1. I mean, we're talking K-pop fangirl level. She might sell you into underground human trafficking chain for a chance to sniff some BTS dirty laundry. Okay, that one was a little out there, I know. The task force plans to lure Kira 2 with staged messages from OG Kira. Kira 2 overshares information on the Shinigami and Death Note, which pisses off Light. And long story short, the two of them eventually meet up, kiss passionately, that's a stretch, and fake date so that Light can abuse her obsession with him to get what he wants. That part is true. L becomes more sus of Light as a new Kira 2 Tate doesn't demand to see L's face, which means Kira 1 most likely already knows it. Point to letter L. Light is fussy once again, no surprise here, since Kira 2 is proving to be a lot more trouble than she's worth. And to support this, not too long after, she's taken into custody because DNA they has traced her back to the incident at the TV station. She's strapped up like Hannibal Lecter, and because Light was a dumbass and tried to call her, he is now once more prime suspect for Kira 1. What comes next is yet another complicated, stupidly ambitious plan that should fail, but thanks to plot armor, does not. As everything falls apart, Light admits he has a bondage fetish and wants to be jailed like his quote unquote girlfriend, who has lost all Death Note related memories as Shinigami Rem, very demonic name, bonked her on the head a little too hard. Light also asked Mr. Fugly Ryuk to re relinquish his death note after about a week into his confinement, and he magically loses all his death note related memories as well. After Light has been in confinement for two weeks, Kira killings start up again, making me, you, and the entire task force wonder how the fuck this has come into fruition. Thankfully, my boy Sugami is about to enlighten us on this matter. Rem gives the death book to this shady back alley motherfucker, and he's been killing under her orders, making it look like Kira 1 is still active. After 50 days in their personal asylums, El has to release Light and Misa, as it's starting to appear like he enjoys keeping people in cold, soulless rooms full of sadness. On the release, Light is handcuffed to L, a little kinky, but 
we'll work with it. While this is going on, some big business corp gets a hold of the note of death and they want to use it to make more money and kill people. I mean, that's what this book does. The task force finds this out after another complicated plan goes perfectly well with no problems whatsoever. Riding on the ass of the last one, they form another complicated plan that goes perfectly, well, perfectly wrong, actually. Finally, one of these things goes south. At first, all is well, and they have Kira the three cornered like a scared stray. But as the death note is passed around the campfire and the task force becomes aware of the existence of demons, Light touches the notebook, losing his magic-induced amnesia, once again starting up the ninth righteous crusade to take the holy land known as Japan. Kira 3 is killed by Jesus Light, who continues to play innocent, with L fully aware that Light once was Kira, but unaware that he is once again Kira. Yeah, I hope you're following that plot line. It can be rather confusing at times. As Light continues his obsession of making sophisticated plans that tend to work out thanks to his obnoxious level of high luck, L plots his own sophisticated plan that carries us to the end of the series after he bears witness to Misa and Light plotting his demise. So here's how Lightbulb's plan goes. Light knows that the demon Rem will kill L to save Misa's life since she loves her. I'm not sure in what way. And in doing so, Rem will die because of another random plot element that I'm too lazy to explain. Sorry. This means that the two people that could stop Light are out of the picture. So Rem does the does the thing. Chad Butler dies and my boy L croaks. It's big sad. I'm pissed. You're pissed. But I'll be damned if I don't watch to the end to see this little shit get what's coming. With best boy out of the way, Light's path is no longer obstructed. After five years pass, Light becomes hunted by two new guys who also have strange names and come fresh out of the orphanage, ready to clap his cheeks just like L. The only problem is one doesn't like the other though, so he just leaves. Cool guy. Nier on the other hand starts up a team called SBK. This means super police karate or something. It's not that important. But remember this guy? He kidnaps the commissioner thinking he knows stuff about the note of death, but unsurprisingly, he's completely fucking useless. Almost like he heard me shit talking him, the commissioner goes ahead and commits the bad thing that we can't talk about on YouTube, and the mellow group kidnaps a little girl to fill the void left in their hearts. This pleases the fruit crazed demon as shit is starting to get interesting again. Light gets contacted by Nier who claims himself to be the second L and goes by the letter N, as in the letter of the alphabet. Light panics like a little child stuck in a Chuck E. Cheese at 3 a.m. with the only source of light being a pair of ominous animatronic eyes. The task force then flies to LA to make a trade for Light's little sister and the note of death. Like any good brother would, Light contemplates killing his sister to save a little notebook. But before that can happen, both Light and Nier are completely bamboozled at the drop and Nier's team is ratio. Light in classic style makes an elaborate plan to recapture the death note. Per usual, it all goes Light's way with his father making a deal for the Schrodingen to get Orphan One's real name. This is followed by Daddy Yagami dying later that day, making my hatred for Light acquire free will and a strong desire to beat the life out of that little shit. Episode 30 makes it clear the entire world is sucking the wiener of Kira, letting him do anything he desires. Everyone with the brain hates this, but since that only makes up about five people in this show, it doesn't really matter. Nier gets the cogs turning in the Japanese investigation team's brains, and they start to once again question whether or not the guy they've worked with for multiple years has been Kira all along. With his credibility on the line, Light uses his godlight influence on 98% of the population to have a kid a cult mob storm the super police karate forces building, drawing Nier out so Misa can kill him with the Sharingan eyes. As Light mocks Nier in the form of an Xbox audio message, Nier reaches his breaking point and the story enters its final stage. Nier and the super police karate force escapes the cult mob and resets up base. An investigator from Light's team has accumulated enough balls to share some important knowledge with Nier. The entire task force team is a mess as they play real life among is trying to find Kira, and Light shadily mails the death note to some edgelord that has pure devotion to his one true god that just so happens to be 23 year old sociopathic freak Light. The edgelord follows through with the usual acts of judgment with a hint of psychopathic nature. Meanwhile, Yagami wipes up some girl that has a hot for him as well as the real Kira. He ends up deeming her his goddess of the new world. What about Misa? <laughs> I mean, he's got a point there. Near a man on a mission, enters Japan ready to show down against Kira, calling Light up, trying to draw him out. He internally accepts this challenge, unaware that he has accumulated Light's search history that he has inherited from L. Thanks to Aizawa having somewhat of a brain, he becomes 93% sure that Light is Kira, and the rest of the task force follows suit. The conditions for the final confrontation include all task force members being present, the death note being present, and meeting on January 20th. Oh, looks like you can't count him out yet. Melo shows 
shows up and yoinks Light's new wifey from a red carpet event. While my friend Mello does almost everything right, he makes the mistake of being a gentleman, and the girl uses a piece of Death Note to kill Mello. Doesn't pay to respect woman, man. Light is then contacted by his new world goddess, and decides to kill her rather than save her in usual Light fashion. The date of the final showdown arrives, and everyone who knows the truth of the Death Note gathers at the meetup. Light is, per usual, confident that his outlandish plan will work. The task force members are still sus of Light, and the super police karate team has got their shit together. Just as near assumed, here to three, or maybe it's four, shows up to write all their names in the death note, but near planted that specific death note as a fake. But Light predicted this move and has already switched out the books again. Light becomes so confident before this that he pretty much admits that he's Kira. But near predicted Light's prediction and had a countermeasure in place. Yeah, hell if I know what's going on. Kira number whatever it is, is cuffed, and the notebook reveals that Light is Kira since his name has not been written in it. Light does this skinny boy equivalent of a roid rage, and his sociopathic nature takes full control as he attempts to justify all all his killings. When no one takes his side, he attempts to write Nier's name on a piece of death note, only to get absolutely bodied by Matsuda. Kira 4 then stabs himself with a pen and Light flees like a little bitch. She doesn't get too far though before Ryuk fulfills the destiny that has always waited our little light bulb. He writes his name in the death note and we come to our conclusion as the show goes full circle. Well, this series was definitely an interesting one to do in this format, let me tell you. I hope you ended up enjoying it to the end, and if you have any thoughts on what show you'd like to see next, let me know down below. Thanks again for watching this video all the way through, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.